Now, two of the main criticisms I hear against Micro Four Thirds are poor ISO performance and no blurry backgrounds. So, with that in mind, I'm just going to leave this here. <laughs> Now, I don't count the criticism of dynamic range when it comes to Micro Four Thirds because, quite frankly, it's utter nonsense. And most of the people saying it wouldn't know the difference between 8 stops and 14 stops of dynamic range if it slapped them around the gizzard. But honestly, there is some truth in the other two. Now comparing my Canon full frame to the EM1 Mark II, there's about one to two stops of difference after about ISO 800. But with that said, I can still get totally usable images with this at 1600 and 3200. You may be happy with more noise, I'm personally not, that's about my limit. So this is the SLR Magic 25mm T0.95, which in full frame terms looks pretty much identical to a 50mm f1.8. But this thing has two stops more light gathering capability. In fact, in the case of the Canon 50mm f1.8, that actually has a T-stop of approximately 2.1, so it's more like two and a third stops, which, when you're talking about micro four thirds, that is huge. Now, if you don't know the difference between f-stops and T-stops, here's the quick version. F-stops is a physical measurement of the focal length divided by the iris opening of the lens, whereas a T-stop refers to the actual amount of light getting through to the sensor. Now, T-stops are used in cinema, and it just gives an even exposure across multiple cameras with multiple lenses in any given scene. It's just more accurate. But in photography, when we're capturing stills rather than video, um, F-stops are good enough. This is a cine lens, though, hence the T. 0.95. So how much does two stops matter? Well, as an example, it's the same difference as between f1.8 and f4. Now you try shooting f4 at night, you're going to have some really quite high ISOs. And in a situation where I would use 1600 ISO for a scene, I can now use ISO 400. And for Micro Four Thirds, especially older Micro Four Thirds, that's a really big deal. Now this is a fully manual lens being a Sony lens, um, and that's going to slow you down a little bit. Um, and they are a little bit more expensive than the uh, Olympus or Lumix counterparts. This was £214 used against about £100 to £120 used for the Olympus 25mm uh, f1.8. So I'm going to carry on shooting with this for a little bit and get some images There's, it's sunday night there are not a lot of people around so it's probably going to be more sort of urban landscape kind of stuff than actual street photography you know, street photography but uh, i've also got the gf2 with me just to sort of show that even an older camera like that which is pretty awful once you get past about 400 800 iso with a lens like this that makes up for that deficit. Now, the reason I bought this lens over the Olympus or the Lumix was that super fast aperture. Because while the ISO deficit versus full frame is blown somewhat out of proportion, um, it still is a thing. And regardless of what system you're using, being able to keep the ISO lower in order to get the cleanest possible image is always a bonus. On top of that, I've always had a standard 50 on every system I've ever used, literally from Nikon right through Sony and Canon and everything. And this time I just wanted something a little bit different. So Richard has very kindly uh, lent me his face. <laughs> Look at that face. 
to show you how bocalicious this lens is at 0 0.95. Uh, as soon as I learn how to focus, there he is. All right, so there we have it, the SLR Magic 25mm T0.95. Should you buy this lens? Um, probably not. Um, I knew what I was getting into when I went into this, and as you probably saw from the video, um, it, it's got some nasty chromatic aberrations wide open. Uh, and that doesn't really go away until about F4, but even then it's still kind of a little bit there. For stills, that's not a problem, totally fixable in post, but for video, it does look kind of nasty. However, in, in better light, in sort of more even light, shooting wide open like that does have a really, really nice dreamy effect. And that is in part why I bought this lens over the Olympus or Lumix counterparts. Now, for many people, the Olympus or the Lumix will be the better option. You've got your autofocus, you've got much better performance and much better control over those chromatic aberrations. But there's just something about lenses like this and having that two stops of extra light is always a real bonus. Now, this lens is actually very sharp, wide open, which is why I went for this one over the Voigtlander because on a lot of the comparisons I'd seen, it said that the Voigtlander was really quite soft at 0 0.95 and didn't really improve until 2.8, which then it's like, well, what's the the point in having a 0 0.95 in the first place this however at 0 0.95 as you saw from the very first picture this one that was wide open it's very very sharp in the middle it looks great i'm, I'm really happy with it um, i'm definitely going to get myself a whole set of these i think i'm probably going to get the 12 mil t 1.6 next the great lenses i really do love the look that they give so would i recommend it though <laughs> for most people probably not um I, again i knew what I was getting into when I bought this lens. I'd done the reading, I'd, I'd looked at a lot of comparisons, and this was where I landed. And I just, the, the look is great. But for most people, the higher price point, the manual controls, no autofocus and all that sort of stuff, it's gonna put a lot of people off. And for most people who just want to be able to shoot without any of those uh, issues, yeah, probably not. So, hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know what you thought in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.